Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I hopped in here to give you an update. I'm currently uh, um, experiencing a lot of changes in my life these days. But of course, even in the middle of a move, I will stop and definitely um, take a little pause from my daily activities um, because I would always welcome a planty interruption. So it's been a while since I showed you any plant unboxing but today's un unboxing will be quite different. So my friends over at Gully Greenhouse reached out to me because apparently they saw my Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's Cyril Cybernated. And Gully Greenhouse is also on Instagram. I'll put their username over here. So yes, they reached out to me because they have some tissue cultured Monstera obliquas. Now, when it's tissue cultured, of course, the specimens are very young or juvenile. And they wanted to ask me if I wanted to be part of this experiment and actually see the specimens grow up. And I told them that it's actually perfect because I do have obliquas that were gifted to me. I know, I'm quite lucky that, you know, I was just, I would just be gifted a very expensive rare plant. But shout out to my sensei um, for, you know, those planty gifts that I received a few months ago. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen, seen that video, it would be on my previous videos. But, you know, without further ado, let me just start the unboxing process. So Gully's Greenhouse, they're based in Colorado, and I'm glad that there is some certification that is on the box because for someone who lives in California, that is very important because sometimes you get your packages confiscated because of insufficient documentation. And of course, it's just um, better to be the, for this to be like a legal plant mail. Um, when um, a facility or a greenhouse has the right permit to import or export and or export, um, they could be up front and label your box like as live plants. Like how this box of theirs says like fragile or fragile. Thank you for being cautious. Um, and let me open this. Okay. Um, it looks like a cute strawberry sticker. Funny how I just had a few strawberries earlier. And I got some gully stickers that I could play with. Oh, cacti, strawberries, cacti. And we have a little um, store card over here. Planting instructions. Ooh. And I think they included some surprises that I completely don't know about. So... Ooh, okay. Oh, they actually have names for their plants. So today we are expecting Babs, Marlo, um, Neville, and Odette. We're also getting Opal and Uma. So these are starter plugs. So definitely very um, decent sized specimens. And I love the packaging because um, it's environmentally friendly and I could definitely use this because I'm moving in the next few weeks and I could use these packing materials. Let me just put these packing materials in another box because I would use them. So I actually prefer biodegradable or recyclable packing materials because I'm the one I'm the type who would reuse those, like, as much as possible, I don't want to pack, I mean, spend on a lot of packing materials now that I'm moving, I've spent enough already on those um, not so environmentally friendly packing materials, but I'm gonna reuse those whenever I have to ship something for sure. So I'm just emptying half of the box was made up of those recyclable papers and here is how they are packed inside okay. 
and let us start opening i'll try to match the plan so it said it is upfront labeled here that it's gonna be the monstera obliqua grown from tissue culture so if you don't know what the difference is between tissue culture and what would be the term like an og plant so we usually refer to them as like oh this is an og tetrasperma and it's distinguished by saying like a tissue cultured raphidophora tetrasperma actually when they first reached out to me i haven't i wasn't really aware that obliquas have been tissue cultured already but apparently i think every plant can be tissue cultured or at least most of them can be tissue cultured um, I just don't know the specifics, but I was pleasantly surprised because having tissue culture means that the public or majority of us will have access to these plants. So I'm just opening. Ooh. Okay, so I didn't really think that it would be this big actually because... Hmm. So this is, yeah, this is what was labeled as the Monstera Obliqua. It does look like an Adansonia to me. But then again, Gullies reached out to me and checked if it would be comparable. Because of course, you wouldn't really know the ID. But just by judging on the naked eye, it looks like... Uh, very um, a regular Adansonia to me. I don't know. We'll find out because this is the tissue culture that they received, and this is my obliqua. So you could already see the difference um, just on the leaf shape, the the amount and the sizes of the fenestrations, and the proportion or the ratio of the fenestration versus the actual um, leaf. And that that's the first one, allegedly quote unquote, obliqua tissue cultured. And this is the real or OG obliqua. And this is the quote unquote, allegedly tissue cultured obliqua. So we're gonna set this aside. And I just wanna show you the other obliqua that I have. So there are two specimens. I believe it was just one leaf each. When I got it a few months ago, um, the other one is actually outgrowing the other. They had two leaves at the same, well, one new leaf at the same time. But I think it makes a difference that this one is in my bio orb and this one is just like in a normal glass terrarium. And let us continue with the rest of the unboxing. So that was the first plant, coat on coat, um, Monstera obliqua. Let's see the other one. This is so cute. So I believe, so the first one we got was, I think they named it Odette, the Monstera Obliqua. Uh -huh. And this should be Neville, um, which is a starter plant, which of a bio a philodendron by Penifolium aurea. I did have a bigger specimen of this, but I just kind of neglected it. Um, so with the bipennifolium or the horse head philodendron, um, these will eventually have like lobes that will mimic your horse head. Um, but this one is definitely an Aurea. It looks very neon, even with our nighttime lighting over here. So this is the Neville. That was the second plant. Let's see the third one here. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what plant this is. I'm trying to find it on the cards that I received. So we got Odette and Neville. 
I think this is Babs, a, um, a juvenile Raffidophora decursiva. I do have a bigger specimen and yes, this is confirmed a Raffidophora decursiva because they will eventually have their um, splits once the leaf matures. So you could let this climb and once it climbs, and clings onto a surface, the leaves will also mature and develop splits. Just like the rest of the aeroids that, as I mean, develop that, that way as they mature. So we're three plants down. In fairness, I am just enjoying unboxing a lot of these plants. Let me put them out from this box. This is plant number four. Um, I believe um, Gullies has a web um, website selection of their plants. They also have in-person retail if you are in Colorado. And ooh, we have the fourth plant. I think I know what this is. So this is Uma. The card says it's Uma. It's a philodendron red emerald. So yes, I also have a red emerald, um, but it wasn't. It's not looking cute anymore. Not as cute as this, but this is such a joy to keep and just take care of because of the red, beautiful stems. So we have a red emerald. That's our fourth plant, and let's proceed because this is going to be a very long unboxing. And... Ooh. Wow, this is unexpected. Okay, now this is a really good surprise. Kudos to Gullies because we have the name is Opal. Opal is a variegated Hartley philodendron or a philodendron cordatum, cordatum, Hartleaf. And these things are actually going for crazy prices these days. And I'm stoked to receive one from them. So yeah, I, of course, we all have our regular Hartley philodendrons. I think a lot of us started that way, but a variegated Hartley philodendron, this, I mean, I, in the beginning, I don't understand how others could just go for a crazy amount of prices, but apparently, I guess anything that is variegated um, can, is considered a different part of a different, I mean, it's considered a part of a different market now. Although the regular Hartley philodendrons are quite common and easier to find, the variegated ones go for a crazy amount of prices on eBay. So I'm very happy to have one of these that I didn't have to fight for. So thank you Gully's Greenhouse for sending that. I never thought I needed a variegated Hartley philodendron until tonight officially. And I think this is the last one. And I'm just making sure because it is a very deep box. I think this is like a 10 by 10. So I like that the plants are well packed. They come with a stake. There's also a um, like moss that covers the base so that, you know, the they are in soil. It looks like they are in soil wouldn't spill and I think this is the last one this should be Marlowe the Ver Monstera Edansoniae Ver Varlaniata so I'm sure I had a Laniata a few years ago and I think I just gave it away um, recently when um, you know I gave it to my office mate so the lanyata, what I remember is their texture, I mean the leaf texture is quite different. So let me see, cause this one looks like a totally different variety to me, or based on what I remember when I studied my Adansonias a few years ago. But this was the last one, a lanyata. Now, I will let Gullies know that definitely 
I don't think this is a juvenile obliqua. It is another variety of an Adansonii. And this, I think this is actually the Lanyata variety. And this is the regular Adansonii. Because a few years ago, I went so crazy looking for the Adansonii that I got different kinds from different growers. And I was able to distinguish how different they are based on growing conditions and I think variety. So, yeah, we'll see because it looks like an Adansonii to me, not an Obliqua. When I got my Obliquas, although as juvenile as this one, they have the signature um, fenestrations and the signature, I would say like rippling at the edge of the leaves and the, the shape and the, just the overall um, appearance of the leaf is very different from an Adansonii. Probably in, in the naked eye they look similar, but yep. Anyways. Today's very pleasant surprise was receiving a variegated hardleaf philodendron or a variegated um, chordatum. That is always a surprise. I mean, I feel like everybody at some point would get excited when they receive like an unusual variety of a plant that they already have. Like when you got the raven's easies, which are like darker than your regular Zamiacolcus zamiafolas folias and um just like a variety of the same plant always still excites me even though it's four years down the line now in plant collecting so yes i am so excited these are starter plants that were sent to me by gully's greenhouse and i'm thrilled i appreciate the gesture i could of course still monitor the growth of the adansonii or the coat on coat obliqua but for sure it's not obliqua. As we say in the plant community, hashtag it's never obliqua. So yeah, it's always good to know because it, you know, it's better that we know the ID. It's better that we are open to the possibility because I've had few plants that were mislabeled in the past. And of course, as I developed my knowledge and identifying plants, they were either mislabeled in a bad way or in a good way. Like I bought a Hoya Engleriana labeled as a Hoya Bella. Like if you don't know the difference, if you're a Hoya head, you would just like think it's a Bella, but it's not. Or you would think it's a difference in the growing condition, but it's not because it's actually a different species. Um, so yes, that was today's unboxing. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate that you guys watch the content when I probably upload this video and when I move to a new place. We're just gonna take a new fresh take on everything. I want to sp hopefully spice it up, hopefully introduce something new, hopefully inspire you with new content, new things that you could do, or just like look at things in a new perspective. That's all I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, don't miss me so much because I'll be back sooner than you think. And thank you for watching the video. Again, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's Cyrus Hibernated. If you want to check out Gully's Greenhouse, I will be posting their username. Their website will also be on the bio. And thank you for watching. I want to hear which plant was your favorite for today or which plant is still something that you hopefully unexpectedly come across in your plant mails one of these days. It is getting colder in some areas, so I think it's time to slow down and just probably not slow down, but hurry up and acquire your wish list plants for the year before it gets colder to have sh plants shipped, exported, imported, or just, you know, picked up in person. So again, thank you for watching. You guys have a great day. Bye.